magnetism was caused by the movement of an electron. This was never supposed to be possible. A machine that runs forever without fuel, wires, or even sunlight, just magnets. For decades, the idea was dismissed, ridiculed, and buried. But it was real. Hidden in plain sight, Howard Johnson's magnetic motor defied everything we've been told about energy. No combustion, no emissions, just perpetual motion powered by invisible forces all around us. Now, after years of suppression, the truth is resurfacing. A forgotten invention that could shatter the energy industry and redefine human potential. Why was it buried? Who stood to lose? And why is it reappearing now? Let's find out. The Forgotten Genius Howard Johnson wasn't just another name lost to time. He was a man driven by a quiet, relentless question. Could magnets be arranged to create endless motion? Born in 1919, Johnson was far from a hobbyist. He earned his degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Minnesota and later studied advanced concepts of magnetism at Vanderbilt. What fascinated him most wasn't what magnets did, but what they might be capable of. Long before he explored magnetic motors, Johnson had already proven himself as an inventor. He developed silent mufflers for military generators, anti-skid brake systems, and injection devices for the medical field. His inventions were accepted, manufactured, and used. He wasn't working on the edges of science, he was improving the machines the world depended on. But something shifted when he studied the behavior of electrons inside magnetic materials. He noticed they moved perpetually, without any power input. To him, that wasn't a curiosity, it was a clue. If that motion already existed, maybe it could be harnessed. Maybe magnets could be the key to unlimited energy. While others mocked the idea as fantasy, Johnson kept working. Not to get rich, not to go viral, but to prove that the energy we need was already here, waiting. The first breakthrough. In 1979, after decades of quiet experimentation, Howard Johnson was awarded U.S. Patent 151,431. It wasn't for a theory or a wild idea, it was for a functioning machine. A motor powered solely by permanent magnets, generating continuous motion without any fuel or external power. The U.S. Patent Office doesn't hand out patents for fantasy. They saw something real, something that worked. Johnson's breakthrough came in the form of a magnetic rotor generator. A wheel, embedded with carefully arranged magnets, spun without stopping. No wires, no combustion, just fields interacting. He didn't just place magnets randomly, he calculated their exact positions and angles to create what he called magnetic imbalance, a push that never stopped pushing. Observers were stunned. The wheel would start with a gentle nudge, then maintain its speed without any sign of slowing. Some even claimed it gained speed. It seemed to violate everything we've been taught about physics. But the most shocking part? It was simple. No complicated electronics, no hidden fuel, just magnets doing what magnets do. Johnson proved that motion could be drawn from the invisible forces already swirling all around us. It wasn't magic, it was engineering, and it opened the door to a world where energy wasn't scarce, but infinite the machines that could change everything. Howard Johnson didn't stop at one device. He created a family of machines, each building on the last, each more powerful, more refined. His second invention, the permanent magnet motor, took the concept further. Using a precise arrangement of angled magnets, Johnson developed what he called magnetic gates. These gates allowed the rotor to move forward endlessly, with attraction and repulsion timed so perfectly 
that motion never stalled. This motor wasn't small. Johnson claimed it could generate up to 20 kilowatts, enough to power a home, a workshop, even a small farm. And then came the most ambitious design, the magnetic force generator. Stacked layers of magnetic assemblies work in harmony to produce up to 110 kilowatts of energy, a device capable of powering neighborhoods without a single drop of fuel. Each design was documented, sketched, and tested. These weren't ideas locked away in notebooks. They were physical machines, simple, elegant, and revolutionary. Johnson wasn't just building devices, he was creating a blueprint for global energy independence. No grid, no emissions, no control. If scaled and shared, his machines could have ended energy poverty and reshaped civilization. And that's when the resistance began. The machinery of suppression. As whispers of Johnson's invention grew louder, so did the resistance. Patent approvals that once sailed through suddenly stalled. Investors pulled out without warning. Scientific journals refused to publish his findings, not after testing, but without even looking. It wasn't rejection, it was avoidance. Something about his work triggered a quiet panic. Johnson wasn't just up against skepticism, he was up against a system. His workshop was broken into multiple times, but thieves didn't take valuables. They took notebooks, diagrams, and prototypes. Anonymous phone calls warned him to stop. Legal challenges drained his finances. Former colleagues distanced themselves, pretending they had never seen the device's work. The most telling sign? Silence. Institutions that champion inquiry and discovery simply ignored his work. Not because it failed, but because it worked. If Johnson were a fraud, no one would have cared. But he wasn't. His machine didn't just challenge science. It threatened trillion-dollar industries. Oil, coal, nuclear, utilities, and entire economies stood to lose everything. What unfolded wasn't a debate. It was a quiet erasure. Not with public attacks, but with red tape, missing evidence, and fear. Johnson had built a machine that worked. And for that, they tried to make him disappear. Now, first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The evidence that wouldn't die. They tried to erase Howard Johnson's work, but some truths are harder to kill. His U.S. patent remains public to this day, a legal document detailing exactly how his magnetic motor functioned. Not theory, not a myth. Real designs with precise magnet placements and technical specifications anyone can study. And when the internet arrived, everything changed. No longer confined to dusty files, Johnson's blueprints began to spread. Photos, notes, and witness testimonies surfaced on forums and websites dedicated to alternative energy. Curious minds across the world started experimenting. Using stronger neodymium magnets, 3D printers, and digital modeling tools, they recreated parts of Johnson's machines. Some reported strange results. Rotors spinning for hours, motors producing more energy than they consumed. In Germany, one team documented a magnetic device running over 400 hours with no input. In Japan, researchers built a version that seemed to defy basic energy equations. Garage inventors in the US shared videos of wheels that wouldn't stop spinning. Not all could replicate Johnson's results fully, but enough saw something unusual to keep digging. The strongest proof? The effort to suppress it because nobody goes to this much trouble to silence a hoax. They only try to bury what could change everything. Why suppression proves it was real. The greatest clue that Howard Johnson's invention worked lies in how hard it was buried. Think about it. Thousands of wild claims about perpetual motion have come and gone, 
most ignored, some laughed at. But Johnson's machine, it was treated like a threat. Lawsuits, stolen documents, threats, silence from institutions that are supposed to investigate new science. That level of suppression doesn't happen for nonsense. It happens when something is real. Johnson wasn't the only one. Stanley Meyer claimed to have invented a water-powered car, then died mysteriously. Eugene Malov, who defended cold fusion research, was murdered. John Hutchison's lab was raided, and his research was confiscated. These aren't conspiracy theories. They're patterns. Every time a new energy breakthrough threatens to upend the current system, it disappears one way or another. Johnson's case is unique because he documented everything. He left behind blueprints, patents, and testimonies. And the resistance to his work wasn't based on testing or peer review. It was fear-driven obstruction. If his machine had been a scam, it would have faded quietly. Instead, it was erased loudly. That erasure is the real signal. They weren't afraid it would fail. They were afraid it would work. And that's why it's resurfacing now. The modern revival. Today, something remarkable is happening. Howard Johnson's forgotten work is being reborn, not in corporate labs, but in garages, maker spaces, and independent workshops around the world. Armed with modern tools Johnson never had, neodymium magnets, 3D printers, Arduino controllers and simulation software, new inventors are picking up where he left off. They're not guessing, they're building, carefully replicating Johnson's blueprints, testing variations, and sharing results in real time online. Videos show magnetic rotors spinning for days, forums filled with diagrams, magnet layouts, and experiment logs. A few groups have even reported consistent over-unity output. More energy coming out than what's put in. Challenging everything conventional science has held as law. Some call it fringe science. But others see it for what it is. A technological awakening. The same institutions that once buried Johnson's work are now watching quietly. The patents may have expired, but the ideas are alive and they're spreading. This isn't just nostalgia or curiosity. It's momentum. The dream of free, decentralized energy is no longer locked away in one man's notebooks. It's in the hands of thousands. Johnson's motor wasn't just a machine. It was a seed. And now, it's finally starting to grow. Howard Johnson may no longer be here, but the impact of his vision is only beginning to unfold. His machines challenged not just science, but power. Who holds it? Who controls it? And who gets left behind? What was once dismissed as impossible is now being rebuilt piece by piece by people who refuse to accept limits. Maybe the world wasn't ready for free energy back then, but it might be now. The question isn't whether Johnson's motor worked. The real question is, what happens when enough of us believe it can? The future is calling. Are we ready to answer it?